Joining me now, as he does every week, is the foreign editor at The Australian, Greg Sheridan. Big news out of Kyiv with the visit by President Biden and Ambassador Voroshnichenko says they're close to unlocking some long-range missiles. That would be a big development, wouldn't it? Yes, Kieran, that is a very big day. Um, I thought Biden would visit Ukraine last time he went to Poland, and I'm not surprised he's done it this time. It's a very powerful, symbolic uh, move by the president. I'm sure they're going to get long-range missiles. I would even forecast that eventually they will get um, the fighter jets that they're after, the F-16s and so on. The Biden administration's pattern has been to be cautious and a little slow and a little resistant, but to give the Ukrainians uh, the next step up in equipment each time. The ambassador in that terrific interview with you just made a compelling case for why they need long-range missiles within the territory of Ukraine. The Americans will just be keen not for the Ukrainians not to make major strikes deep within Russian territory. But I think uh, Biden deserves a praise of the free world here. He really has effectively led Western solidarity uh, with Ukraine. He got the praise from Ambassador Moroshnichenko and other Ukrainians. I asked him, does the rhetoric, is it, is it matched by action and additional military support? He gave an emphatic yes to that question. Yeah, so Ukrainians are naturally frustrated in some areas with a certain slowness in response. The Germans were extremely slow, but they've come to the party in the end. Uh, I think this France-Australia France deal uh, to produce more ammunition has seems to be taking a long time to get it sorted out. So they're in a day-to-day -day fight for their very lives. And, of course, they want people to move more quickly. But no one a year ago would have predicted that the conflict would have gone the way it's gone and that uh, the US, NATO and Australia and a few other nations would have contributed so much uh, to Ukraine and uh, it's very hard to see how this conflict ends, but the, uh, the yeah. solidarity of the West with Ukraine is quite real. I think Australia could do more, and I think uh, the Albanese government will announce a new package, possibly as soon as this week. Yeah, that's, uh, that's certainly what the ambassador is hoping for. He's, he's uh, reiterated his call for, for more support from the Albanese government, from, from Australia, although very appreciative of the, the Bushmasters particularly thus far. He's also one year into this conflict. I asked him how does he feel about the prospects. Uh, in his words, he's, he feels positive, optimistic. Is there a basis for that optimism, Greg? Well, uh, um, yes and no. So the Ukrainians have been magnificent. Uh, you know, if Ukraine lasts for a thousand years, men will still say this was their finest hour. Their heroism, their agility, their responsiveness has been astounding. And they've fought one of the biggest militaries in the world to an absolute standstill right next door to its home. However, I have to say in sober reality, the Russians are far from exhausted. They are a very, very big nation. Their government doesn't care about its own casualties, doesn't care how many Russians die. Um, it's indifferent to the suffering that it causes to Ukrainians and that it causes to its own troops. It's a ruthlessly vicious dictatorship. Uh, no dissent, mm -hmm. no independent media drawing people's attention to what they're doing. So uh, you, Ukrainians have a right to be optimistic and they have to keep their morale up. But, I'd, you know, I'd say to you in all sober reality, this is still a very grim and bloody and terrible situation. Indeed, it, it is. Now, to uh, if we change our, our focus to a speech the Prime Minister is giving tomorrow, still on national security, we're not expecting any further detail of the Defence Strategic Review. What's your anticipation as to what we can expect from the Prime Minister? Well, as you know, Kieran, I think uh, Albanese, Miles and Wong have done a terrific job on national security so far. And um, I think that the Prime Minister should offer his rationale for his whole approach. And I argue in a column in the paper today that if he um, argues this case convincingly and delivers what he's promised in defence capability, 
then he stands in the tradition of John Curtin and Bob Hawke and he will socialise the Labor Party anew into the necessity of the US alliance and the importance of the Australian Defence Force. The coalition uh, socialised its supporters into the necessity of the US alliance, but they totally neglected the Australian Defence Force and, uh, and that part of the uh, consensus has fallen away. And similarly, Labor's consensus, which was built up so magnificently by Bob Hawke and Kim Beasley, has also started to fall away. Uh, it's easier for an Albanese government with a Democrat like Joe Biden in the White House, but I'm looking for a big picture. There, there'd probably be a couple of announceables in it, but I'm looking for a big picture, uh, you know, why his government is doing what it's doing. And this is in a fantastic social democratic tradition. You know, the German social democrats have announced that they're doubling uh, defence spending. No one is keener than the Greens German foreign minister to send aid to Ukraine. So Albanese needs to be self-confident and forthright. Everything he's doing is in Australia's national interest and it is it sits well within Labor tradition. And finally, Greg, at the weekend I reported that there are 18 chapters in that Defence Strategic Review, one of them entirely on the defence personnel crisis, both uniformed and in the production line of our defence hardware. That's uh, something that they've known for a long time. The, the Deputy Prime Minister calls it a crisis, the personnel issue. He, he said that previously. What else are you expecting out of the Defence Strategic Review from what you're hearing and how soon will we get all the details? Well, I think it'll be within a matter of weeks at the most. I believe that they're teeing up a, a time for Albanese, Sunak and Biden to get together in Washington to make the big AUKUS subs announcement. But to focus for a second on uh, the matter that you've revealed, Keir, in the personnel and skills crisis, that is absolutely critical. A lot of the most important things in the Defence Strategic Review are not inherently sexy, like hardening, hardening the bases in the Northern Territory um, so that they can't all be wiped out with a preemptive Chinese missile strike. Uh, we do have a crisis in uniformed personnel. I think the Defence Department's recruitment strategies are insane. You know, they say join the Australian Defence Force because of our social equity policies, whereas in fact, you're only willing to risk your life if you believe in a transcendent purpose, the defence of Australia. But uh, also, right across the board, uh, we, we have uh, really inadequate manufacturing capabilities. You know, three years ago, we announced that we were going to build a missile manufacturing industry. Not a sod of earth has been turned towards that end. Defence often offers the excuse that it's hamstrung by a whole lot of silly laws and regulations. Well, if that's the case, then the government should uh, reform all those laws and regulations straight away. But this sort of back-end stuff, you can't do anything in the military space if you don't have logistics, spare parts, ammunition. You know, the Morrison government announced it was getting long-range anti-ship missiles, and I inquired how many, and the answer was 200. Well, that's, that's a ridiculous amount. You know, that wouldn't keep you going for a day and a half of combat. And after that, they yeah. never again announced the number of missiles in any category they were getting. So I think this is a critical area, personnel and logistics. Indeed, and uh, some stockpiles. We've been reminded of the need for that out of uh, Ukraine. That's, that's for certain. Greg Sheridan, thanks so much. We'll talk to you soon. Appreciate it as always.